In my last slide, I have uh, a list of a few of the studies that I referred to in this talk. In this particular study, um, I took a look at six different strands of systems traditions and analyzed them using the eight philosophical assumptions that were on one of the earlier slides. The approach was to find, and Dr. Umberby was very instrumental in helping me to identify what would be a source in each tradition that would best reflect the typical philosophical assumptions of that particular tradition. And so the sources that were analyzed for operations research, it was the Handbook of Systems Analysis by Meiser and Quaid, uh, for Cybernetics, the Tree of Knowledge by Maturana Morella, for Total Quality Management, Fourth Generation Management by Brian Joyner, for Organizational Learning, two, uh, organizational learning the book Organizational Learning 2 by uh, Ardris and Schoen, for General Systems Theory, a book by that title by uh, Anatole Rappaport, and for System Dynamics, The Electronic Oracle by uh, Menes and Robinson. And here are the results of that particular study. So you can see on the left-hand column are those six um, system science traditions that I just listed. And across the top are the eight uh, philosophical assumptions. And I've put them in an order so that you can see that the first four assumptions were all commonly shared by all six of the traditions that were analyzed. So for example, all six took a holistic perspective all six used as their unit of analysis the interaction rather than an entity. All six um, included the environment as part of the explanation. All six uh, looked at causal explanations that were more complicated than just direct linear uh, explanations. And then the, the other four philosophical assumptions, there were some differences depending upon uh, the system tradition that was examined. And those differences showed up in uh, whether or not they assumed reflexivity. Uh, the next column actually should be, if, if you see yes there, it's coded for indeterminism. Um, but the abbreviation there is for determinism, but yes in that column uh, means that they assumed indeterminism. Uh, the next one over is uh, perspectival observation. And uh, the final column has to do with uh, self-organization. And here are just a, a few examples. Uh, the previous one had the citation for that study and a few of the other studies that I mentioned in my talk. Uh, I think my own limited research in this area and my bias is, is such that uh, I would agree with the statement I made about Jackson at the beginning that for systems theory to really advance uh, rapidly and effectively um, exploring some of these different assumptions and why certain fields assume some things in a certain so that others make different assumptions and see that there's a possibility to do some integration or synthesis of those ideas um, really might advance the, the field in a more positive and timely way. people I work with in the Middle East always ends his emails with this quote that the tragedy of communications is thinking that communication has been completed once something is said. If you could elaborate upon a very interesting sentence in your talk, you said communication is about developing and maintaining relationships. Uh, could you expand that, what the repercussions of that? Well, I think there are, um, that just on the airplane flying here yesterday, I was reading this book, uh, Blink. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that by um, Malcolm Gladwell. And uh, he, it's filled with all kinds of interesting examples of, <coughs> of influence, I guess is one way of putting it. Uh, and I think there are, there are studies like some of the sites in that book uh, and many others that indicate that this whole notion of just the exchange of words back and forth is kind of what happens in an overt way. But, uh, but there's so many other meta messages and other nonverbals and all these other things that uh, really convey the communication that people experience. So just the fact that something's been sent out there doesn't mean that it was at all received in a way that it was intended or that other
other messages didn't completely swallow up the few words that were intended to convey something. So that's the kind of thing we're talking about. According to which philosophical assumptions do you think it's desirable to achieve a unified set of assumptions? Well, I think, you know, again, my own limited research and bias is uh, in the direction of what I refer to as an emerging worldview. So it would have included the ones that were uh, sort of yes indicators on that particular chart. So I, I do find for explanations where I'm doing study within businesses that uh, things like perspectival observation are more often uh, insightful uh, looking at causal things mm -hmm. other than uh, mm -hmm. direct and linear. In fact, I've, I've published a paper on what I, I'd, I'd like to get rid of the whole term cause and effect. I published a paper on what I call the interactional model. So we just looked at what kind of influences there may be and maybe going all kinds of different directions. I guess what I'm thinking is um, that something like interaction, maybe according to conversation theory, um, implies that there's some friction. And if there's some achievement of harmony, then there's no dialogue happening. And so I, I suspect that what's intriguing about some of your work is that you're pinpointing places where there's um, friction. And then, uh, that can lead to some, some new ideas, possibly. Um, so if you end the thing by a kind of peacemaking, well, maybe we can achieve some way where all these differences aren't there. Um, that's sort of implicit when there is a disagreement, and yet I'm, I'm just afraid that uh, there will be questions of, well, who's going to be the winning set of assumptions? Um, and that these fields are partially to be able to have those differences. Well, in business, where I work, there's such a utilitarian uh, emphasis that you can talk with people about is what you're doing or the way you're analyzing it, is it working? And if the answer is for them, from them is no, then I think they're much more, they end up being much more open-minded about looking at something else that might give them some insight to you know, the situation that's not working for them. Okay, thank you very much, Eric.